All right, guys, chapter 12, The Art of War, Attack by Fire. Master Sun said there are five ways to attack by fire. The first is to burn men. The second is to burn supplies. The third is to burn equipment. The fourth is to burn warehouses. The fifth is to burn lines of communication. Attack by fire requires means. The material must be ready. There is a season for making a fire. There are days for lighting a flame. The proper season is when the weather is hot and dry. The proper days are when the moon is in Sagittarius, Pegasus, Crater, Corvus. These are the four constellations of rising wind. When attacking with fire, adapt to these five changes of fire. If fire breaks out within the enemy camp, respond at once from without. If fire breaks out but the enemy remains calm, wait, do not attack. Let the fire reach its height and follow up, if at all possible, if not wait. If fire attack is possible from without, do not wait for fire to be started within. Light when the time is right. When starting a fire, be upwind, never attack from downwind. A wind that rises during the day lasts long, a night wind soon fails. In war, know these five changes of fire and be vigilant. Fire assists and attack mightily. Water assists and attack powerfully. Water can isolate, but it cannot take away. To win victory, to complete an objective, but not to follow through is a disastrous waste. Hence the saying, the enlightened ruler considers deeply the effective general follows through. Never move except for gain. Never deploy except for victory. Never fight except in a crisis. A ruler must never mobilize his men out of anger. A general must never engage battle out of spite. Move if there is gain. Halt if there is no gain. Anger can turn to pleasure. Spite can turn to joy. But a nation destroyed cannot be put back together again. A dead man cannot be brought back to life. So the enlightened ruler is prudent. The effective general is cautious. This is the way to keep a nation at peace and an army intact. So that was attacked by fire. So let's go to the commentary. Attack by fire with commentary, chapter 12. Masterson said there are five ways to attack by fire. The first is to burn men. He Yang Si Giles History of the Later Han Ban Chao was sent on a mission to the king of Shan Shan. See previous chapter where the first part of the story is used to illustrate obedience in the face of extreme danger. Relations between the Chinese government and these border states in the far west were often difficult. Ban found himself placed in great peril by the unexpected arrival of an envoy from the Xiongnu barbarians, the mortal enemies of the Chinese. In consultation with his officers, he exclaimed, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Literally, unless you went to the tiger's lair, you cannot seize the tiger's cubs. The only course open to us now is to make an assault by fire on the barbarians under cover of night, when they will not be able to discern our numbers. Profiting by their panic, we shall exterminate them completely. This will dampen the king's courage and shower us in glory, besides ensuring the success of our mission. The officers all replied that it would be necessary to discuss the matter first with the intendant. Ban Chao then fell into a passion. It is today, he cried, that our fortunes must be decided. The intendant is only a run of the male civilian who on hearing of our project will certainly be afraid and will bring everything out into the open and in glorious death is no worthy fate for valiant warriors all then agreed to do as he wished 
Accordingly, as soon as night came on, he and his little band quickly made their way to the barbarian camp. A strong gale was blowing at the time. Ban Chao ordered ten of the party to take drums and hide behind the enemy's barracks. It being arranged that when they saw flames shoot up, they should be, they should begin drumming and yelling with all their might. The rest of his men, armed with bows and crossbows, he posted in ambuscade at the gate of the camp. He then set fire to the place from the windward side, whereupon a deafening noise of drums and shouting arose to the front and rear of the Xiong Nu, who rushed out pell-mell in frantic disorder. Ban Chao slew three of them with his own hand, while his companions cut off the heads of the envoy and thirty of his suite. The remainder, more than a hundred in all, perished in the flames. The following day, Ban Chao sent for Guang, the king of Shan Shan, and showed him the head of the envoy. The whole kingdom was seized with fear and trembling, which Ban Chao took steps to allay by issuing a public proclamation. Then taking the king's son as a hostage, he returned to make his report. The second is to burn supplies. Dumu Gaio's history of Sui dynasty. This refers to all kinds of grain and fodder in order to subdue the rebellious population of southern China. Gao Gang recommended to Emperor Wen of the Sui dynasty AD 589 through 605 to make periodic raids and burned their supplies of grain, a policy that in the long run proved entirely successful. The third is to burn equipment, Dumu Gaios. An example of this is the destruction of Yan Shale's wagons and impedimenta by Cao Cao in AD 200. Prudent impedimenta. Pell-mell. The fourth is to burn warehouses. The fifth is to burn lines of communication. The commentator or translator. The commentators have widely diverging theories as to the meaning of this last target. I follow Niu and Wang P142 and take it to refer to the various means of communication, roads, bridges, boats, mountain passages, that enable an army to keep itself informed and supplied. Attack by fire requires means, the material must be ready. Jian Lin, it requires wind and dry weather. Du Mu, we need dry plant matter, reeds, brushwood, straw, grease, oil, etc. There is a season for making a fire. There are days for lighting a flame. Mei Yao Chin, a fire should never be started recklessly. The proper season is when the weather is hot and dry. Zhang Yu, because the fire will catch more easily. Translator. This is one of those not altogether rare occasions when the Chinese commentator seems to be stating the obvious. The proper days are when the moon is in Sagittarius, Pegasus, Crater, Corvus. These are the four constellations of rising wind. Translator. These are Guile's approximations and Father Amiot more or less agrees like several other early Jesuits in China. Amiot was a formidable astronomer. In Chinese, these four constellations are called the basket, the wall, the wings, and the chariot. When attacking with fire, adapt to these five changes of fire. If fire breaks out within the enemy camp, respond at once from without. Cao Cao, respond by sending troops. Li Quan, respond by exploiting the dynamic potential of the outbreak of fire. Do you. Use spies to start a fire within the enemy camp and then attack at once from without. Do Mu. The prime object of fire is to throw the enemy into confusion and then to attack. Fire is not in itself the means for defeating the enemy. So attack as soon as you hear of the outbreak of fire. Once the fire has died down and order is reestablished, an attack will be futile. If fire breaks out but the enemy remains calm, Wait, do not attack. Do Mu. 
If the effect of creating confusion is not produced, it means that the enemy is ready for us. A precipitate attack must be avoided. Wait for the ensuing changes. Let the fire reach its height and follow up if at all possible. If not, wait. Li Quan. If the fire has not thrown the enemy into confusion, do not attack. Translator. I follow Niu and Wang in taking these last two sections together. If fire attack is possible from without, do not wait for fire to be started within light when the time is right. If fire attack is possible from without, do not wait for fire to be started within light when the time is right. Dumu, Zhang Yu, Giles, History of the Latter Han. The previous passages refer to fires being started within. If fire attack is possible from without, do not wait for fire to be started within. Light when the time is right. Du Mu Zhang Yu Giles History of the Latter Han The previous passages refer to fires being started within, but if the enemy is settled in a waste place littered with quantities of grass, or if he has pitched his camp in a position that can be burned out, we must carry our fire against him at any reasonable opportunity, and now wait on in hopes of an outbreak occurring within, for fear our opponents should themselves burn up the surrounding vegetation and thus render our own attempts fruitless. The famous Li Ling once baffled the leader of Xiang Nu barbarian, barbarians in this way. The latter, taking advantage of a favorable wind, tried to set fire to the Chinese general's camp but found that every scrap of bustable vegetation in the neighborhood had already been burned down. On the other hand, Bokai, a general of the Yellow Turban rebels, was badly defeated in A.D. 184 through his, neg through his neglect of this simple precaution. At the head of a large army, he was besieging Changxi, which was held by Huang Fu Song. The garrison was very small, and a feeling of nervousness pervaded the ranks. So Huang Fu Song called his officers together and said, In war there are various indirect methods of attack, and numbers do not count for everything. See Masterson Chapter 5 Now, the rebels have pitched their camp in the midst of thick grass, which will easily burn when the wind blows. If we set fire to it at night, they will be thrown into a panic, and we can make a sortie and attack them on all sides at once thus emulating the achievement of Tian Dan. See the commentary to Master Sun Chapter 9. That same evening a strong breeze sprang up, so Huang Fu Song instructed his soldiers to bind reeds together into torches and mount guard on the city walls, after which he sent out a band of daring men who stealthily made their way through the lines and started the fire with loud shouts and yells. Simultaneously, a glare of light shot up from the city walls, and Huang's song, sounding his drums, led a charge which threw the rebels into confusion and put them to headlong flight. So, sortie, S O R T I E. Heard that word multiple times. When starting a fire, be upwind, never attack from downwind. A wind that rises during the day lasts long. A night wind soon fails. In war, know these five changes of fire and be vigilant. Zhang Yu, it is not enough to know how we should attack the enemy with fire. We must also be on guard against the enemy's fire attacks on us. Remember, this is pre-explosives. 
Keep a close eye on the positions of the stars. Know the days when the wind will rise and be prepared. Translator, the ever helpful Messrs. Niu and Wang recapitulate for us as follows. The ways in which the warriors should be responsive to the five changes of fire are one, by responding at once when a fire breaks out within the enemy camp, two, by being cautious when a fire breaks out within but the enemy remains calm, three, by lighting a fire from without if the time is right, four, by always starting a fire upwind, five, by not relying on a night wind. Fire assists an attack mightily. Water assists an attack powerfully. Zhang Yu, water can divide enemy troops. With the enemy's potential divided, our own potential is stronger. Water can isolate, but it cannot take away. Cao Cao, fire can help to win victory. Water can only isolate and divide. It cannot deprive the enemy of its stores. I think they're talking about like the separation of like a river, maybe. Zhang Yu, water can only isolate an army, cut off its van from its rear, and bring a temporary victory. It cannot destroy the enemy's supplies and utterly annihilate him as fire can. Hong Zin used water to flood, to flood Long Ju, see chapter 9, and thereby achieved a temporary victory. But when Cao Cao destroyed Yan Shao's baggage train by fire in AD 200, Wan Shao was not only defeated, he was utterly annihilated. To win victory, to complete an objective, but not to follow through is a disastrous waste. Mei Yao Chen If one wishes to be sure of victory, one must seize the right moment and act using means such as fire and water. One should never sit tight and hold on to the existing gain. This is disastrous. Translator Giles comments that this is one of the most perplexing passages in the art of war. My own translation is, I am afraid, no more than a rather wordy paraphrase based on Mei Yao Chin's commentary, which in this instance differs from the others. With Niu and Wang, I take the passage to be referring to the need to follow through on an attack by fire. To win victory, to complete an objective, but not to follow through, is a disastrous waste. Hence the saying, the enlightened ruler considers deeply, the effective ruler follows through. Zhang Yu, the ruler must consider and ponder strategy, the general must follow through with victory. Never move except for gain. Li Quan, the enlightened ruler and the effective general will not send troops into battle unless they can see a definite gain. Never deploy except for victory, never fight except in a crisis. Cow cow, fight only as a last resort. A ruler must never mobilize his men out of anger. A general must never engage battle out of spite. Zhang Yu, a war arising out of anger usually leads to defeat. Move if there is gain. Halt if there is no gain. Cow cow, Zhang Yu, do not embark on war out of personal emotion. Look to the objective gain or loss. As Master Wei Lao said, do not make war out of anger. If you see victory, fight. If you do not, then hold back. Anger can turn to pleasure. Spite can turn to joy. Zhang Yu, the senses bring pleasure. The mind experiences joy. But a nation destroyed cannot be put back together again. A dead man cannot be brought back to life. Mei Yao Chen, the anger of a moment can turn to pleasure soon enough. The spite of a moment can soon turn to joy. But if you destroy a nation and take the lives of many men, these cannot be brought back so easily. So the enlightened ruler is prudent. The effective general is cautious. This is the way to keep a nation at peace and an army intact. Translator, Niu and Wang go to great lengths to maintain connection between the last part of this chapter and the title, Attack by Fire. But it seems to me that, as is often the case, this short chapter is not an organic whole. These last few observations, which are surely of a general nature, may have been tacked on here by mistake. 
by a copyist working with unconnected bamboo or wooden slips. Yates, 1985, P219. As D.C. Lau warns us, with texts such as this, we must guard against forcing a unified sense out of what does not in fact belong together. So the enlightened ruler is prudent. The effective general is cautious. This is the way to keep a nation at peace and an army intact.